Okay, so let's have a look inside now. If I open these up, we can see the atria. Now some of the structures we can see here, this is the left atrium, and this is the right atrium over here. You can see how the superior vena cava would bring blood into this right atrium. This right here would be the pulmonary artery, which we could also see going behind these two blood vessels and coming out over here. Again, that pulmonary artery is going to bring blood to the lungs to get oxygen. We could see the right pulmonary veins here bringing oxygenated blood into this left atrium. This structure right here, this wall, is going to be the interatrial septum, the wall between the atria. And there's a little indentation here. That little indentation is called the fossa ovalis. Another structure we could see here is the pulmonary semilunar valve. If I were to put this back in place, we would see that that's right at the base of the pulmonary trunk. This pulmonary semilunar valve will close when blood tries to flow back into the heart to prevent that from happening. We want to keep blood flowing in a positive direction, in this direction, toward the lungs in this case. We can also see the aortic semilunar valve. Okay. And just above the aortic semilunar valve is where the coronary arteries will branch off. So when these cusps fill with blood, that blood will get redirected into the coronary arteries so that the blood can be circulated to the heart. So what we're looking at right now is the inside of the right atrium and some of the structures we can see here. Inferior vena cava would be right here. Here you can see this smaller blue structure right here. That's the opening to the coronary sinus. Another structure we can see is this thing right here. This is the fossa ovalis. It was the foramen ovale which would allow for blood to go from the right atrium to the left atrium to bypass the lungs when we're a fetus. Next, let's open up the ventricles. Here we can see the right ventricle and on this side we have the left ventricle. The way to distinguish between the two is look at the thickness of the walls. This left ventricle right here when compared to the right this left ventricle is more substantial, it's thicker, it has thicker walls. That's because the left ventricle has to pump blood through the entire body. The right ventricle has thinner walls because it only has to pump blood to the lungs which sit right next to the heart. This structure right here is the interventricular septum. In this right ventricle, we can see the right atrioventricular valve. If we look in the left ventricle, we can see the left atrioventricular valve. Now this right atrioventricular valve is also known as the tricuspid valve. It's a tricuspid valve because it has three cusps, and the reason that it has three cusps is because of the shape of this opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle. That opening is an irregular shape so it takes three cusps to close it. Okay. On this side, this left atrioventricular valve has two cusps because the opening between the left atrium and the left ventricle is circular, so it's easy to close with two cusps. These structures right here on both sides, these structures right here are chordae tendinae. And what they'll do is anchor these cusps of these valves to these structures down here. These are papillary muscles. Here's another papillary muscle over here which would connect to these chordae tendinae. Okay. These papillary muscles anchor the chordae tendinae to the walls of the ventricles and by doing that they'll anchor the valves. What that does is it prevents the valves from turning inside out when the ventricles contract. We want the blood to flow out these large blood vessels at the top here, not back up into the atria.
An interesting structure we can see on this side is this moderator band right here. Okay, what this does is it sends electrical impulses to the papillary muscles so that they contract first and pull on these chordae tendinae, then the ventricles will contract and what that does is it makes sure these stay closed before the ventricles have a chance to contract. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.